Hey, my dear friends, I am glad you have tuned in today to this program, Insight for Life. I believe God with all of my heart that he will be ministering to us and he will be speaking to you and your friends. Now, I want you to go ahead right now as we settle down, invite your friends to tune in right away because God will be ministering to us. And I'd like you to look at the phone numbers and the contact in case you want to reach us, please feel free to reach us. At the end of the program, I will come back again and give you some guidance and instruction on what to do. God bless you, my dear friend. Yes, thou a man who is diligent. That's the word I wanted. Who is diligent in his business. In the Revised Standard Translation, he puts it this way. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. In the New Living Translation, he said, do you see any truly competent worker that will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. And listen to what the Amplified says. Do you see a man who is skillful and experienced in his work? He will stand in honor before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Today, I'm preaching a part two of <coughs> this message, Abounding in Favor. Diligence is a benefit or is a practice that has tremendous benefits. Skillfulness, diligence, competence. Jesus Christ, as the son of the living God, the Bible says in Luke 2.52, which I've read many times and I hope we can commit it to memory, that Jesus Christ, he increased in wisdom he increased in stature and he increased in favor. How? With God and man. Remember that Jesus Christ was born to a family whose primary occupation was carpentry. <laughs> I had a mentor, very funny mentor. We, we traveled to Abba with his team. I, was, I just finished A-levels then and uh, he was introducing everybody in the team. You know, there was a professor, there was a doctor, there was, you know, all kinds of people. And there was a brother who was a carpenter. You know, <laughs> Reverend Omar says that brother so 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 is a wood technologist. <laughs> you, know, you know, Jesus Christ was born into a family whose father, Joseph, was doing carpentry. So if his ministry did not start until age 30, so naturally we want to suppose that Jesus Christ was in the family business, which was what? Carpentry. Carpentry, upholstery, they were making chairs, making beds, and making furniture for people. And Jesus Christ, if he increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man, it means that even in his business practice, or in his business practices, he was excelling, he was developing skills, he was developing competence, and he treated people with such dignity and honor and integrity that he found favor with people. He treated people well. That was why he increased in favor. You know, there are some business people who leave a sour taste in your mouth. By the time they are finished with you, you will know that this one's a scoundrel. You, you know, this, is, this one is just a fraudster because of the way they try to shortchange you, the way they do a shoddy job, the way they treat you with arrogance, the way they treat you as if you were just a piece of mud. Why? Because you are engaging their services. But not Jesus Christ. If you increase in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man, you and I can tell that this man did his job well. Look at somebody and say he did his job well. Now, the Bible says that if you are diligent, if you are skillful, if you are competent, you are going to serve kings. And when we say kings, then that's a euphemism for you're going to serve dignities. You're going to serve at the highest level. When you do your job well, when you develop skill in whatever you're doing, and I want you to hear me, in whatever you're doing, you will serve at top level. And people will give you what you deserve. 
It's not just, just about service. It's about serving at a competent, skillful level. You know, many years ago, I, my sh one of my shoes had a problem. And one of our members said, Pastor, there's a guy somewhere who can, who's a good cobbler, but it's expensive. <sighs> so I took my shoe there. The man doesn't haggle much. Obviously, if, you know, from Asia, one of those places. And he just tells you the price. But he does the shoes so well. And you know, there's these shoes that, you know, you must have bought sometime before the Civil War. <laughs> but you know this shoe is good. You, you just love it. You wear it, you're comfortable in it. You wear it, you feel, you know, two inches above your height. You just like the shoes. And no matter what happens to that shoe, you want to fix it. So when the man calls his fee, believe you me, I don't haggle with him. Because this man does the job well. When you do your work well, and so people will pay you, they may grumble sometimes, but they are happy that at least the product that you delivered was a good product. Amen. So God wants us to be those kind of people. And there are benefits to doing your work at top level. Because when you begin to serve, look at first, look at Isaiah chapter, um, Isaiah chapter, um, chapter 60 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. It says that, it says, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles will come to your light. It said, but kings will come to what? To the brightness of your rising. Kings will come to you when you do your work well. And the benefits that they bring is more than ordinary benefits. Do you understand? The, the Bible says when Jesus Christ died, remember, there was a guy who buried Jesus Christ. What's, do you remember his name? Joseph Tacon. Joseph of Arimathea. The man, the Bible says, was a wealthy man. The apostles could pray and fast and evangelize and do all those things. But they couldn't bury Jesus Christ because it required top money to bury Jesus Christ. A wealthy man was willing to go out and ask Herod for um, um, Pontius Pilate for the body of Jesus Christ and bury Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ must have served him well. Look at somebody and say, serve well. There are benefits, there are benefits, there are benefits, there are benefits. So you increase in favor when you are willing to evolve, you are willing to grow, you are willing to advance, you are willing to develop, and you are not static, and you are not fixated on the same traditional ways you have always done things. You are willing to grow, you are willing to improve, you want to become a better person in your attitude, in your work, in your business, in your relationship, you want to evolve, you want to grow, you want to develop, you want to increase in favor with God and with man. There's a passage I did not give to the media, it's Galatians chapter 4, I think. It says that as long as you are a child, it says that you will never enjoy your inheritance. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. He said, now I say this, that the heir, as long as he's a child, is not different from a slave. Though he is the master of all. And so he has to be tutored. He has to be kept under tutelage, under supervision. You will never really enjoy your inheritance. As long as you are working at pediatric level. As long as you insist that you are going to deliver infantile services, as long as you insist that you're going to deliver super services, you will never really enjoy your inheritance. God has your inheritance for you, but you never, uh, you are not willing to evolve. You are not willing to grow. You are not willing to increase. You are not willing to develop other skills, other attributes, other attitudes that you don't have right now in order to bring you to a higher level so that your service so that your activities so that your commitment so that your delivery is at a top level look at somebody and say grow jesus christ grew jesus grew you're jesus like somebody will put it you're, you're jesus the possessor of the heavens and the earth the one who walked on water when he came and there was a storm the one who could that who could heal blind eyes the one who could unstop deaf ears he grew 
He increased. So why are you not growing? Why are you not improving? Why are you not increasing? Why are you not growing in your favor with God and with man? Why? Why are you not? If Jesus grew and we want to walk in his steps, if Jesus has given us an inheritance, the Bible says that we have been lifted up to sit together with him in heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers and authorities and dominions and kingdoms. And God wants us to exercise our covenant authority and dominion on this earth. Then why are you not growing? Why? It's a question you must answer. 2024, we've not gone too far. February is just ending. I want you to answer that question and to answer it honestly. Look at somebody and say, grow. I beg you, grow. grow. Tell them, I beg you. I really beg you. I beg you. Because my benefit in life, my success in life is dependent on your growth. It's dependent on your development. It's dependent on your ability to perform at top level. It's dependent on that. How do you increase in your favor? How do you increase the way Jesus Christ increased in your favor with God and your favor with man? How do you grow? How do you evolve? Number one, please God. Uh, one young lady was, you know, she read the news, um, the intro that uh, for service two Sundays ago, and I, I, I'm glad the way she did it. Please God. Look at somebody and say, please God. Please God. No. See, forget the world. The world will always be the world. Shut your ears to the glitter and the glamour and all the, the noise making of the world. God is all that matters to you. God. If you fear God, listen to me, you can stand before any man. If you fear God, please God. Please God. Proverbs 16, 7 says, it, it says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. They may hate you, they may scandalize you, they may talk about you, they may gossip you, they, they, they say all, oh, but you see, at the end of the day, there are things they cannot do to you because God is the one that determines the boundaries of your life. Glory to God. You know, Abraham went to, you know, he was in, he was in Ero, but he went, to, he went to Egypt and um, there was a famine. The Bible said that he went, he went south. And he got to a, a town where the man, the king there was Abimelech. Abimelech took his wife. He lied, even lied. He said, oh, she's my sister. She's my sister. Right. The Bible said that that night, God came to Abimelech. He said, that man is a businessman, but he's a prophet. You look at him from the physical, but he's a prophet. He said, if you touch his wife, you're a dead man. You see, when you please God, you don't know what your enemies see. Sometimes your enemies know you better than you know yourself. Because God told Abimelech, Abraham did not introduce himself as a prophet. He, he came as a business. God says, hey, that man is a prophet. Don't touch him. You know, the Bible says in Corinthians, we do not look at any man after the flesh. Say, but we look at men in the spirit. Are you listening to me this morning? Please, God. Look at someone that say, please God, this message, you are going to help me preach it. Please walk to three people and tell them, please God, just please God. Please God. Please God. Please God. Please God. Please God. We'll be preaching this message together. Please God. When a man's ways, please God. When a man's ways, please God. Some of you are concerned about popular opinion. You're concerned about your friends. You're concerned about your family. You're concerned about your boss. You're concerned about that. No, honey. Just let God be all that matters. You know, there's this song that somebody say, you are all that matters, right? All that matters. Just please God. I mean, one day we'll talk about a lot of the things you will do to please God. And let me tell you, the way that God calls you to please him is unique to you. There are general principles on pleasing God, which is in scriptures, but there are also specific principles as it relates to you as a person. That's why you can't live your life based on popular opinion. Oh, what do they say? What, what, do, they, what, what do you think? Uh, what, what do you, what? <laughs> There's a story that's playing in my head. I'm tempted to tell you that story. Should I, should I tell you? I know you like this. I know you like this. 
you know, the, the tortoise went to Seattle to, to get married. Went to Seattle to get married. And um, so they, they, t they told him, he said, it's not, we'll give you the wife, but um, they, they gave him a hot cup of tea. You know, it rains almost <laughs> nonstop in Seattle. He said, if you drink this tea within the next one minute, you can take the woman. Don't I say that's not a problem. <laughs> he got all the choir members. He came with 12 members of, his, of the choir. He lined all of them, put them all in a line. He said, can I just talk to them before I drink the tea? They said, yes. Yeah. So Tortoise came to the first one. He said, you see this cup of tea? It's hot. I'm going to drink it. And I may die in the process. When you go home, when you get back to Atlanta, my clothes are with the dry cleaners. Please collect it for me. He came to the second one. You see this cup of tea? It's hot. I kept some money in the bank. I've not collected it. Please, when you go collect it. By the time he finished talking to 12 of them, what happened to the cup of tea? And that's what happens when God is talking to you personally. And what you want to do, you want to seek popular opinion. What do you think? What do you, by the time you finish seeking their opinion, what God told you is cold. And the fire is not there anymore. Please God. Number two. <laughs> Honor God. Honor God. I told you, help me preach this message, right? Walk to four other people that you did not talk to first and tell them, honor God. Talk to the other people that you did not talk to. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs 3 verse 9. Proverbs 3.9. I know some of you have been meaning to do this for a long time. <laughs> Proverbs 3.9. Look at it. Proverbs 3.9. It says, honor the Lord. How? With your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your increase. Don't say, God, I honor you. I honor you. You know, Jesus said it very clearly. He said, there are people who honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far away from me. Somebody said, don't tell me what you're doing. Don't, talk, don't tell me what you want to do. He said, your actions speak so loud. I can't hear what you're saying. Honor God with your possessions. When you honor God with your possessions, you honor God because everything you have came from him. Everything. There's nothing you have. I told you I've done so many funerals. I've never seen one funeral as a man is going and say, please give me my certificate. Give me my de fixed deposit. None. There's only one man who died and decided to carry his Harley Davidson along. One man. He said he would, he, that he must be buried with his Harley Davidson. So they put him on the Harley Davidson. <laughs> they did a special casket for him and put him on it and they dragged the thing throughout the city. But he was cold and frozen. He didn't see it. Honor God with your possession. There's nothing you will take away from this place. Not, I don't mean to, you know, to, to talk about this young man who died three weeks ago. But when you build a house that is over 10 billion naira at that campus, which of them did he take along? None. So you honor God with your possessions because ultimately he's the one you're going to meet. Because everything you give to God, you are putting it in store for yourself. You're going back to meet everything. Nothing leaves your hand to God that leaves your life. I'm not talking about giving and receiving, about, you know, you give. That's a different message. But I'm talking about you honor God with what belongs to God. When you collect from God, when you collect from people, you come back and you say, God, this is what you have given me. What do I do with it? Not why well, it's my own, it's my own. You, you, know, <laughs> you, you know how you, when you carry your children out to fast food restaurants, you know, my kids when they were young, We'll go out to one of these fast food restaurants, we'll buy fries and all that for them. And I say, can I take fries? I say, no, no, mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Have you heard children say that? Mine, mine, mine. Where did you get it from? <laughs> I gave it to you. You say, mine, mine. Honor God with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. Number three, show mercy to people. Go and tell two of the people you don't like. Go and look for them. Go and tell them. I'm giving you. Tell. Go and tell them. Okay, tell the ones you like. <laughs> we will preach this message together. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Go and tell somebody. Show mercy to people. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at verse 3 and 4. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. Let's have it quickly on the screen. It says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Don't let them. Bind them. <laughs> then verse 4. Can put verse 4? Give us so that all of us read it. Want to go? And so you will find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and show mercy. Show mercy. Mercy means, what does mercy mean? You do not give to people what they deserve. They've wronged you and they deserve revenge. The day you were hungry, they spent money and they did not look at you. And they deserve payback. Don't give them what they gave you. Show mercy to people. Show mercy. And show mercy to the helpless. Show the mercy. He said, when you do that, put that passage back on the screen. He said, you will find favor and high esteem. Before who? Sight of God and man. God and man. Show mercy to people. Don't let people curse you because of your meanness. Ah, what went? You know, I went to a missionary school. You know, those of you went to missionary secondary school. You know why it was? Where, yeah, you know where there's corporal anointing. Anointing. Corporal punishments. My school, they used to do it. Man, I, <laughs> Some of us, we had teaspoon. We had to go around with teaspoon in our pockets, because during work days in the afternoon, you finish school in the afternoon. Good school, you know, very good school. Finish school in the afternoon, and you have to eat lunch. And then there was a, the prefects will come to the cafeteria. One particular one, I will remember his name up till date. He will ring the bell just as you're about to eat, so they don't let you wash your hands. So we have to carry a spoon. He will ring the bell. He said, "Today there's going to be work." When I say work, I mean work. Dare you come late. It is better not to come than to come late. And dare you not come. Once he makes that announcement, he goes straight to the assembly ground and starts ringing the bell, telling you it's time for you to be there. So you don't have time to eat, to run to your dormitory, Change to your regular clothes and then come back to the assembly ground. How many of you went to those kind of schools where you had to change, you had uniform, you changed, you know, you, you know, some of you went to night grammar school. <laughs> you know. This guy was so mean. He was so mean. All of us junior students were praying for him to fail his work. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're praying. We're all praying that he will, I don't want to call his name on, you know. We all know, I mean, many years later, we still, we could not forget his name. And then in my school, they did mock before the YA. They would do mock for from five students to see how they perform so that they would spend more time with those who have problems so that, you know, before they take the YA. And then the mock result came out and he passed. Hey! hey. He came to the assembly ground. He said, you people thought I would fail. <laughs> I, I passed the exams. This guy was mean. He was wicked. He was wicked. One day, the last, one of those days I was in, a, in the bank in my hometown. He come, and funny enough, we came from the same area. Same area. I was different. I was very lovable. Students loved me. <laughs> <laughs> Students truly liked me. They, oh, they liked me. You know, I saw him in the bank. I just looked at him. I felt sorry for him. He didn't go far in life. I believe it's because of the prayers, of the wicked prayers of people. <laughs> Because he was a brilliant, he was in 5A. 5A were the brilliant students. He didn't go. After he left secondary school, that was the end. Of, I asked the other day about him. They say he's somewhere in this village as a local chief or something. People prayed evil against him. May they not pray evil against you in the name of Jesus. And some people say, oh, well, I'm a Christian. Uh, their words will not stand against me. It's not true. Why did God stop Balaam from speaking ill against the children of Israel? Because those words can be powerful. 
Particularly when too many people are saying, God, remember me. What that man did to me, remember me. God will hear their prayers. But for you, it is good in the name of Jesus. Show mercy. Wow, 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 wow. We praise God for speaking to us during this program. My dear friends, I'm sure God ministered to you. And I would like you to be a part of this service as we go forward. In case you wanted to give your life to Christ, we don't like ending uh, a broadcast without giving you an opportunity to make a commitment to Christ. So you can pray this simple prayer, inviting Jesus into your life. Dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. And when you do that, send us a text message, an email, or call us on the number on the screen so that we can keep in touch with you. Now, before you close out for the day, right now, you can be a part of the service as you as you turn off your tv or while you're still on your tv go to youtube right away and type city of david atlanta and join us in the live service it will be an awesome time in the presence of the lord god bless you same time next week remember to tune in to insight for life god bless you